Okay, I get a lot of people ask me, what do I do if I get an acute back pain episode and my back locks up and I can't move? What exercise do I do to unlock it and get me moving? Now, if you're one of those people that has recurrent episodes of back pain, maybe you've got a lumbar spine disc bulge diagnosis and you're going through a bit of rehab, but every now and again, your back tends to lock up on you. If you haven't done your rehab for a while, it tends to lock up, it's not 100% and you go through this pain episode, well I've got four exercises that you can try to try and release it so you get moving again and then go back into your rehab. So this is very much a initial stage routine that you can do to get you moving, get the pain and spasm down so you can actually do your proper rehab because when it gets really bad, some people can't even do their rehab and their normal stretches. So this one may be a really good one for you. First thing I get people working on is pelvic tilts. Now, You've probably seen these before. Now these are designed for you guys to try and release the muscle spasm in your lower back. So best thing to do when you're in bed. If you wake up out of bed and you're really locked up or if you're lying down, you're locked up and you can't move, this position here is obviously the one you're gonna be in, but it's where you're gonna do your little pelvic tilt. Now what we try and get people doing is thinking about the pelvis here, tilting in a posterior direction. Now, to guide you with that, what I tend to do is get people in like a triangle position of where their pelvis is. So if their hands are on the bony parts of the front of the pelvis, the fingers on the pubic bone, you're thinking about like a triangle here. Now, if you do a posterior tilt like this, your fingers are gonna be higher than your thumbs. If you do an anterior tilt, your thumbs are gonna be higher than your fingers. So from neutral, it'll be flat. So what you're trying to do is go into a posterior tilt. So you're technically flattening your back and going into some little, a little bit of lumbar flexion. Most of it is this pelvis tilting backwards, which will give you that lumbar flexion. Now, some people say, oh my goodness, but it's a disc problem, is it okay? It's okay if you're in an acute episode where you're locked up because you have to get muscles, you have to get yourself moving out of that locked up extension position and get those lumbar spine muscles released off. You're going to also be unloaded. There's no disc pressure coming down like you would be when you're sitting, when sometimes where the pain happens, as you're in this sort of unloaded position. So going to here will be okay. You've just got to work in the range that makes it relieving, okay? Obviously, I don't want you doing a whole ton of heaps and heaps of flexion here and causing more issues. I also don't want you bearing down and trying to do an ab crunch, to try and force it into flexion. The best thing you can do is push through your heels to try and push back and slowly move your pelvis into a little bit of posterior tilt, a little bit of lumbar flexion. It's almost like your back just touches the ground and then you slowly release it off again. Think about if you want to guide you, think about that triangle you use with your hands and then just think, okay, fingers to the ceiling or fingers to the sky, and then slowly back in. And then you know you're going in the right direction. And what that's gonna do is create a little bit of movement. That movement will register the brain, especially if it's relieving pain, to try and unlock and let some of that muscle guard and go. That would be my first one before you even get out of bed or try and get off, is just try and work on that. Reps and sets, try and aim for just keep it simple. 10 at a time. Just do 10 slow movements. They might take about five or six seconds, even up to 10 seconds just to do one. And you're gonna do 10 of those. If that's feeling better and you're moving, you sort of feel like it's unlocking a little bit, maybe do two or three sets of that in a row, but no more than that. Then you need to move to what we call controlled rotations. Now that's just trying to get movement left and right of your lumbar spine, okay? But it's controlled under guidance. It's not sustain movements over here, way over here like this, okay? It's just little movements because you won't be able to tolerate that movement, especially if that's, if a stretch like this is part of your rehab program, you're not even being able to get there because you're all locked up. So what I suggest you do, keep your feet on the ground, right? A little bit of trying, tiny little bit of core engagement that you might have learned before. It's a little bit of pelvic floor and activation through here to, just to keep your muscles turned on so they're doing a bit of work. What you then do, Stabilize out here with your hands, up or down, doesn't matter. Keep your knees together, and I want you to slowly move both knees to one side. So you can see how my heels come up there. I'm keeping everything locked together, because I'm trying to get a bit of rotation movement through my lower back. 
and then I slowly come back. The best thing you can do is work in the range that's pain free or doesn't cause any more pain. I know you're going to be in a little bit of pain or maybe quite a lot of bit of pain just lying there because you're in an acute episode. But there is points where you'll find that it's actually a little bit less sore. So just work on that range that is okay. If you find there's more pain if you go further than a certain point, don't go into that point. Just work on what's available. You'll probably find over sort of two or three sets of 10 of going each side, it actually gets easy to do. Your muscle spasm drops down because you're moving, your brain registers that that's not threatening. You get a little bit of less spasm and a little bit less guarding, and then you can go further. Obviously, the further you go, the more movement you get, it snowballs into getting better and better and better. So rotation-wise, I'd sort of probably do five each side, and there's 10, and then go have a wait for a bit. You might wait for a sort of half a minute to a minute, see what the result's like, and then go again, do three sets of that. So that rotation one is gonna be another really good one to do to follow your pelvic tilt while you're lying down, okay? Then you need to work on sitting. So if you can get to the point where you can get up into a sitting position, so if you were in bed and then you could get up and then sit on the side of your bed, or if you're in a sofa, get up, sit on the side of the sofa. And those are the two sort of position places you need to be doing these rather than straight on the floor because if you're on the floor you have to get up off the floor. If you're already in bed all you have to do is sit up. So we'll pretend this is the side of the bed. From this position here what you're going to try and do is a pelvic rock. Now that means I'm going to rock my pelvis from left to right and that's to try and unlock my two big sort of slabs of meat of extensors at the back and my QLs at the back that are sort of they're the ones that will just tighten up to keep my back very, very solid and stable to keep it out of pain if you like. But unfortunately that causes a lot of spasm pain. So being locked up like that hurts. We've got to try and reduce that before you get stand up and moving. What I want you to think about is if you can position yourself where you feel your two bottom bones at the bottom of your pelvis. So they're your sitting bones if you like. You're going to rock from, from one sitting bone to the left sitting bone. But you've got to try and keep your upper body stable. So you're rocking underneath and the best thing to do to think about that is try and lift one pelvis and move on to one side and then move on to the other one and lift the other. So effectively your pelvis is like a boat rocking in the water and what that's doing is I'm using my muscles in my back, my QL makes sense, to lift me. I'm using a little bit of obliques as well so I'm using a bit of abdominals to try and do the movement and you'll probably find you can actually do a little bit of movement without too much pain. It's actually sort of almost takes the pain down a bit because you're using muscles that were in spasm. There's, it's very minimal load, but you're not putting too much demand on them. So when a muscle's in spasm, it's tight, it's not moving. If you start moving it, it has to relax because you contract it, then you relax it. And this contract, relax of the muscles that are, are in spasm, then gets the spasm down and it drops the pain. So they can actually function, stabilize, and then all of a sudden you can move, do your rehab. So just try and do maybe 10 each side. So you go, so if I'm gonna go sit on my left side, sit on my right side, try not to move your upper body like this. I'm not, I don't wanna tick tock left and right. I want to move underneath. So this stays stable. I lift and I lift. Very slow, pendular type movements, lifting left and right. And that's just hopefully gonna bring that spasm down. Wait for a bit again. You might go through three sets of that before you even stand up. So those first three is a good way to try and get you out of spasm and get you moving. So if those first three work quite well for you, what I suggest you do is try and do a little bit of traction to help a bit of gapping and a bit more relief through your back. Sometimes this works on people, sometimes it doesn't. So it's one you'll have to trial and make sure that it does work for you. I've got a yoga block here today. You can, if you don't have one of these, you can use a big thick book and maybe cover it in a towel because this is grippy. So the towel will create a bit of grip if the book's a bit shiny and slippery. So what I want you to do with this one is do this after those three I just taught you. This block, if you lift your pelvis by pushing through your heels and get it ready, just slip it straight under your pelvis like that. Okay, so it's not under your lower back. We want it under your, think of like under your bum if you like, but it's on the hard part where your sacrum is. So if you look at this, part here, it's on this part. So my pelvis is sitting like that, okay? So, and, and if you find that lifting up into a bridge is sore, which is maybe one of your rehab exercises, but you're not ready for it yet, is you just 
push to your heel, slip it under, and then release. Now from there, this is how you traction your lumbar spine a little bit. You're thinking about the block being on your sacrum, so this is free. What I want you to do is slowly raise, slowly lower one leg down. Are you okay? Does that feel all right? Then can you slowly get the other leg down into this position? Now that's the weight of the legs, because I'm raised up, will give you a little bit of gap here and a slight bit of extension on here, okay? You've got to make sure that that feels okay and is relieving for you. And this one, you're only here for a minute. So don't overcook it and try and stay there for 10 minutes because you're probably going to make your back sore. So it's one minute at that point. If you can feel good with your legs down, you start raising one arm and then the other arm, and that'll provide you more traction from the upper body. Okay, in that position you try and relax in that position there. You may even let your legs fall out to the side if you need to. But if having your arms above your head hurts, then you need to bring that down. Maybe you're not ready for that and just stay in that position. And that position there is going to be for a minute long. Now, if your pelvis is sitting on there like that, okay, the weight of the legs is like a gapping, okay? So if you imagine where your spine is, you're providing a bit of traction, which is just the opposite of load bearing down through the spine. So sometimes it can be quite good for those acute disc episodes where nothing seems to work, was a traction does. And it gets you through that phase of just giving you some relief so you can get a little bit better, a little bit less spasm, and then move into all your rehab and mobility exercises that you do normally for a lumbar disc injury or lower back injury and move along into the proper rehab. So there's my top four. Let's see how you go with that. See you next time.